to attend the live demo on how to reduce your downtime by 50% from Deer Deck, you're at the right place. Again, we're just waiting for people to register and get on the webinar. We'll get started here shortly. After the presentation today and demo, there will be an opportunity to ask questions. So feel free to think about things you may want to ask this group regarding their technology and how it can help your organization. We'll get started in about 30 seconds. We need music on hold. Doreen, can you sing? Well, I'm not sure if people would stay on the line, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's my problem, too. I, I love yeah. to sing. But, uh, yeah, so if people the two of us singing something to them, we might risk um, people dropping out. So, But it's a good idea. We should do that next time, right? Right. We have some kind of theme uh, playing in the background, like the Bond theme or something, you know. Oh, yeah, very current. That'd be really nice now. Oh, we have to something? something, too. That would be cool. <laughs> okay, I think we should get started. Uh, good day and welcome to today's webinar, live demo on how to reduce your downtime by 50%. Next. Brought to you by... Dear Deck. Next slide. Doreen, uh, your slides aren't moving. Okay. Um, because I actually see them. Okay. Um, so you're still at the Dare Deck slide? I didn't see the Deerdack slide. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's just try Jerry, this. Jerry, are you seeing slides change? No, they're not. Do you want me to pull up my slides? I can do that. Hmm? Yeah, if they're not uh, if they're not moving, we probably need to do that. Hmm, do we want to do the following? Do we just quickly want to try? I know we're, we just started, but do we just quickly want to try to make me presenter again? Because I think I just... Yes, Doreen, I did just do that. So why don't we see if that kicks it back? Right. There's your deck. If you can't uh, do the uh, intro deck, I'll just kind of talk through it, and then we'll get started with yours. Yeah, I have a, a, clean, a clean screen conflict popping up. That's my problem. Okay. Well, yeah, let me up, just a, we'll just swap it back here real quick. Oh, there you go. It's there. There we yeah. go. Beautiful. Yeah. There you go. All right, we're in, we're in action now. Thank you. So you're... Uh, it's presented by Deer Deck. I'm your host. I'm Rocky Pisto. I'm a Vivid Chapter Leader and SIG Leader in the uh, BSM space for as long as I had hair and beyond. So I've been doing this a long time. Next slide. Today's presenters are Doreen Jacoby, who's President and CEO of Deer Deck. Uh, she's been working in IT since 1999, co-founder of DIRDAC, a leading vendor for intelligent incident and mobile response software, has held different uh, executive positions and now acts as president and CEO of DIRDAC in, in the U.S. So she's fluent in English, German, and Spanish, strong passion for technology, and 
the second speaker, who's actually going to be doing the demo today, is Renee Borman. He's in the on the R and D team. He's the R and D team leader at DeerDAC. Heads DeerDAC's product development team and owns expert knowledge in designing enterprise class notification software and solutions. With more than nine years of experience, he understands and anticipates anticipates evolving enterprise customer needs as well as as disruptive as well as disrupt or new technology trends so those are your speakers today next slide some housekeeping uh, information for those that are familiar with Vivid know this but uh, those that aren't this is a live session being recorded uh, it will be available to all Vivid members uh, there is a session Q&A, so please type in questions in the question panel. Next slide. Here's a picture of a GoToWebinar control panel that usually appears in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. To submit a question, make sure that the question panel is expanded and type in your questions and click on the send, and that way we'll see your questions. Next slide. I think that was I it, think from the, That was <laughs> it, yes. So from there, uh, Doreen, it's all yours. All right. Well, let me bring up my slide here. Let's hope it moves. Uh, move all the way back. There you go. <laughs> you didn't see anything, right? But you see the yeah. first slide now, everyone, correct? Yes. Great. You're good. So thanks, Rocky, for that, um, for doing the introductions here. And once again, also from my end, um, thank you for joining us on today's webinar on how to reduce your incident response and resolution times by 50%. Rocky already did a great job introducing me and, my, uh, me and Renee, so I'm just going to skip that part. And I'm just going to let you know that the way we've scheduled the presentation here today is that I'll provide some introductions and a brief overview of our overall concept which will approximately take eight to 10 minutes. Um, the major part of today's webinar will be a live demo, and that will be guided by Renee. Uh, so hopefully we'll be um, wrapping this within the next 45 minutes to leave enough room for Q&A. Um, so like Rocky said, please feel free to actually address any questions to us. All right, so one of the questions you face when thinking about 24-7 operations is, whether to operate a knock or have people respond to and resolve incidents from wherever they are. What you have here on this slide on the left is your classic picture of a knock, someone monitoring for critical alerts and incidents and then taking action accordingly. Or over on the right, you have your mobile on-call engineer, um, the gentleman here with a broad smile, um, that's waiting to board his flight while resolving a situation on go. Now we're not saying you need to replace your knock or anything like that. We just want to show you how we can help to accelerate incident alerting response and resolution. How do we do that? Let's get started by looking at some typical needs in a 24/7 IT operation. Um, these are, and I'm going to bring them up, bring them up one by one. All typical examples from our real life customers. So something that has actually been communicated to us, and it comes from our customers across a variety of verticals, including manufacturing, retail, automotive, financial, transport, you name it. Let's start with a key requirement here. For anything to be sent to your mobile on-call engineers, of course, it needs to be 100% reliable. Um, so if you do not have people monitoring in front of the dashboard, then this has to be 100% reliable to ensure that you actually get it. To then, um, let me just bring them all up actually, one by one doesn't work. Um, to then actually make sure that the engineer only receives what matters to him or her, um, you would want to avoid floods, right? Like spamming him, creating a lot of noise, and make sure that he does receive the relevant alerts only. Being able to track, escalate, and most importantly to automate are critical key ingredients of a solution um, that assists you in accelerating your response and resolution times if you're on the go. And another thing that you would want to consider for the automation side of things is to integrate everything with your on-call scheduling. Why would you do that? Well, 
to ensure that someone is paying attention, um, incident alert notifications need to be targeted, right? So something like this is a uh, network issue, so send it to the network engineer on call. This is a database issue, so send it to the database person on call. All of these ingredients then essentially make what you see here on the, uh, on the right hand side here, on the upper right hand side, they make for fast and effective anywhere response and resolution um, solution that really helps you to be mobile. Another important aspect that you don't see on the slide but that we consider um, as part of the automation angle here is that you want to have full automated integration with your backend systems. So in our context, let's say your HP OMI, your HP NNMI, etc. Now, when looking at those standard ITSM and BSM products today, what are the main features that are missing in order to ensure a mobile response and resolution? Let's bring up a number here. First of all, generally there is a limitation on the communication options that you have. Some tools can do emails, others can do text, um, some can do both, but maybe not escalate from one to the other, um, which is not really the way you want it to be. Then most products are missing tracking and auditing of alert flows. There is a lot of um, there is a lot of issues around how to actually reduce your noise. There is no intelligent filtering, so there is just basically a lot of alert notifications being sent out. That's also not something that you want. There is no on-call scheduling included. It's not tied in with your on-call scheduling routines. Um, they, there is no ability to actually bring in other peers or colleagues if you want to collaborate on a certain issue. There is a lot of latencies and standard communication processes. Remember that um, classic knock person monitoring that screen in our first slide there and then acting but trying to reach the responsible engineer? Well, while this is all happening, a lot of time elapses, right? And then something that's literally non-existent is the ability to trigger remote remediation actions. So having said all of that, um, what you really want to look at is that aside from what your standard ITSM and BSM tools provide, which is great for detecting events, etc., but if you truly want to be mobile and be able to react from anywhere, so wherever you are, then you want to have a solution that's fast and effective and as fast and effective actually as modern technology permits. Looking at what we provide to that and what we actually bring to the table here. And this is actually one of the one of the last slides I'll be sharing with you, second last, I believe, before taking um, passing this over to Renee here. Um, you have three main pillars here. I'm just going to bring them all up to make it easier. So when we at Duradac talk about reducing your response and resolution times by 50%, which by the way is a customer quote um, that we received. So it, a customer actually told us that he reduced his um, times there by 50%. Then we refer to the vision of anywhere operations as the ultimate goal. And that means that we want to enable you to put your NOC or your control room on your smart device. This way opening a whole new level of data center operations. Our solution, as you can see from this slide here, rests on three main pillars. Over on the left, you have your Anywhere information. That involves the complete notification part, right? To be able to read events, retrieve events from your um, HP tools here, for example, and to fully automate address them to corresponding on-call team or teams. Target notifications based on predefined parameter, parameters that you can configure to ensure, like what I said earlier, that e.g. a network issue gets addressed to the according network personal call. To also give you an actual customer quote and maybe visualize this a little bit on why this is so important, um, one of our customers is BT Global Services and they shared the following with us. They said that we cannot really lose any time when there is a serious issue. Severe incidents are luckily very rare, but when they do occur, we need to be absolutely sure that we are immediately aware and able to respond. 200,000 government officials will be impacted if we miss an alert. So I think that's quite significant here. In the middle, you have your Anywhere Collaboration Pillar. 
So once you receive a notification, you might be aware of what is happening, but might need someone's assistance in order to resolve the issue. From our native smartphone applications, we offer the opportunity to connect to other on-call experts. Let's say set up a, a voice conference or transferring them to an existing call bridge, things like that. We also provide full transparency to a Who's On Call dashboard, allowing you from your smartphone to start dialing and reaching out to colleagues and peers that you might not even know are on call, right? So the software will detect them for you. Over on the right, you have pillar number three, which is your Anywhere remediation. And that is actually something that is unique to Duradac. By integrating with IT automation tools like HPOO, for example, we offer the ability to trigger remote remediation actions from your smart device. So no more firing up your laptop and VPNing in. Everything is just a click away, and all you need is access to remediation actions that you can trigger from your smart device. That could be restarting a service, um, troubleshooting an issue, restarting a principal, or things like that. This helps you to not only be aware, but to actually take action on a given event. And this is the full closed loop cycle that we will demo to you in a second. Just this very last slide before this goes over to Renee to visualize the previous slide with the three pillars here a little bit. Over on the left, you've got your all of which can generate Coming from the mobile side, trigger remediation actions to actually neutralize or resolve the situation. Not to forget, this is all two-way. So everything that happens here on the mobile side is fed back into the actual event source. Um, and the whole process is fully automated from the moment an event is pushed or pulled to the actual resolution. Another theory, I'm going to pass this over to Renee, and Renee is going to show us what this actually looks like. Hi guys, I guess you can see my screen and you can also hear me very well. Um, yeah, thanks uh, uh, for the intro and for the for walking us through the through the slide deck and, and giving us some context here. Um, with that, I would like to start the, the demo part of the webinar in which I want to show you how we enable anywhere operations um, of mission critical incidents with our Enterprise Alert um, 2016 um, application and, and software. So the reason already mentioned that a bit. Um, actually, anywhere operations is often organized with on-call schedules and on-call calendars, right? Because the idea is that you make people responsible for looking and operating your environment in after hours or on weekends or even 24 by 7. But um, you ensure responsibility and route the information to different people at different times, right? To fairly distribute your incidents and and yeah issues that come up. And the software has the capability of managing your on-call schedules. This is what you can see here on the current um, browser window. So that's the application. That's Enterprise Alert. And um, I am logged in as someone who has access to a calendar um, of a team, how we call it. So I will work with that network team frequently, um, also with another demo team. Um, but the idea here is to manage on call um, yeah, service for the network um, staff in our environment. Um, so these guys are responsible for managing network infrastructure. That's the scenario here. And you can see I am able to manage the whole on call calendar and make people from the team responsible to look at incidents that our application sends to these engineers. Yeah, so that's the, the basic idea. So the, so the, so you start with making people responsible and scheduling your own course service. You can see my calendar looks a bit um, like a demo calendar. 
because the primary duty is, is done by John Doe most of the times. Um, yeah, so today actually he's primary person and then yeah, I am a backup person. So that means that you can actually escalate from one person in a team to another person in a team in case the first person misses an alert. Yeah, so there's a lot of features um, when it comes to on-call management and on-call schedules. Yeah, um, so as I said, you can schedule on different layers. There is the notion of stand-ins, right? In case of unforeseen emergencies, you can quickly change the schedule by dragging in um, other people um, to become a stand-in um, at particular times. You can actually manage holidays in the calendar itself to notify people then on different times, etc., etc. There's also the idea of an on-call dashboard that uh, displays all the currently responsible people, et cetera, et cetera, um, from, from all the teams. So you get a great idea of um, who's currently on duty, um, all this kind of stuff. Um, and you can even um, um, actually manage the schedule fully automatically um, by using um, a feature that we call auto-rotation. I don't want to spend too much uh, information or time on that feature. But there's also a mechanism to greatly distribute and auto-rotate through all the team members and then you don't have to touch the schedule again and again from time to time manually to make people responsible. All right, so now the question is how can we actually um, notify the scheduled person um, um, fully automatically with Enterprise Alert and HP software? So the idea now is to actually um, yeah, have event sources in the software. Um, through which we receive incidents coming in from third-party applications, from third-party apps um, like, like HP software. Um, in my demo, I will work with HP Network Node Manager, as this is a kind of network context and demo scenario. Um, but also HP Operations Orchestration will play a significant role in my demo, Doreen mentioned it a bit, for the purpose of being able to automatically resolve the problem um, that the network team is facing in, in his environment. Um, on their environment. So the idea is there's incidents come in, coming in and then we want to route them automatically to the currently scheduled person. So an enterprise alert it now takes two things that we require and need to set up to, to get that working. Um, first of all, what we need is we need to integrate into HP software, right? So I have my node manager here and we need to connect to it. Yeah? So we want to connect enterprise alert and integrate it with the HP network node manager. That is um, the first thing. And then the second thing is to set up some automation, some rule, Doreen mentioned it briefly as well, um, that helps us actually to route stuff automatically to this team and to apply the targeted notifications she was talking about. And this is an example here in this browser window of such an alert policy. You can see the policy is looking actively at all the incidents and issues coming in from Node Manager and then when certain criteria matches the incidents that come in that you configure in the details of the policy, then we notify the network team's on-call person, which is all the details that we define in the, in the policy itself. But this is the basic idea. Look at issues that come in from your existing environment and then to apply targeted notifications with alert policies. Yeah, so they evaluate the issues and say when network um, is affected, then we notify the network team and when a database is affected, which is something that is reported to Enterprise Alert by, by operations manager, um, then we notify the database team. Yeah, so there's a lot of rules that you can create here. And um, as I was talking about the integration to these systems, of course, we need to first of all be able to get the issues from your HP software, which is what we do um, by integrating into these systems. Yeah? And here in the um, system section of Enterprise Alert, you can see that we can actually configure what we call event sources and also IT automation systems. Yeah? And both are important for today's demo. Because um, I configure the integration into HP operations, man, uh, operations orchestrations in the automation section. So you can see there's a tile showing up here, HP OO. Um, and this um, represents my integration, my connection to um, HP operations orchestration that you can see here for the purpose of making selected flows available on the mobile app that we will see in a couple of seconds. Yeah. So um, there is the integration that you can configure in the IT automation section. And then also in the event sources section, 
I can actually connect to as much as monitoring systems um, and and um, yeah, monitoring systems from various vendors um, to actually be able to to receive incidents fully automatically because we don't actually monitor ourselves. And you can see here some tiles, HP Operations Manager showing up here. You can see my active connection to the Network Node Manager, and also some standard interfaces are available um, like SMTP or a web service interface that you can also utilize to send your issues to Enterprise Alert and to thereby trigger off the policies and the notifications and to notify your, your mobile staff. Now at this point in time we would like to raise the first poll um, which actually asks um, which kind of systems you would want to integrate with and um, yeah, what, what kind of, of systems you have in your environment to get an idea of, of what you find um, useful here. Thanks, Renee. And and the question is, what are the backend systems you see enterprise alerts integrated with? So, if, as you're, if you're an HP customer, you're using OMI, or if you're using NNMI, or HP Service Management, or Operations Orchestration, or some other, please, uh, you know, select one of these, and uh, and we'll generate the results here in a minute. And uh, and Renee, you know, as you were kind of going through your your presentation, so I think the beauty of this, and I, again, I've been in the monitoring space since HP first offered it to the channel back in 1993. The beauty is if I have one of these HP tools, I can now get all this information to a mobile or to a uh, like an iPad of some sort if that's what I'm using, and it's configurable to to create an action to solve the problem. So is that kind of the high level? That's kind of the high level and this is exactly um, what it is all about. So being able to consolidate all of that and only forward the relevant stuff of it to the mobile application that we will see um, in a couple of seconds on my, on my Apple device. Great. So let's get the results now, Terry. And we'll see where it's coming in and then I'll share this with the team. So it looks like, you know, the back-end system that everyone on our, uh, that's viewing today, it's roughly 25% is through service management and 25% through OO and and, uh, and then 50% other. So I imagine there's uh, people on the line that may be using, you know, some of the other competitive tools, non-HP tools. Uh, that seems to be significant. So is that, is that kind of interesting? Renee, uh, it is. It I, is. I, it definitely is because right. it, yeah, it is a great example of all the yeah hybrid environments that we are facing, and that's a key concept um, in the product to be able to connect all of these systems from different vendors at the same time, and digest the incidents and then make the relevant ones available to your mobile um, um staff in after hours. That's that's perfectly matching what what we see as well. So. In case, uh, yeah, Node Manager is not your major system, um, replace it in mind um, with the system that you are using. Um, be it a service manager or, or service desk software, um, we can digest incidents from these CMDB systems as well and do the same stuff that you will see from the Node Manager side of, of things um, now next. Um, so with that, um, I would like to move onwards here and show you um, here in the, in the, with the app and with the rest of the product um, what we actually um, deliver for the three pillars that Doreen was, was introducing us to, meaning in, in information, then the ability to, to um, do collaboration, and also at the end then the third pillar, the remediation part of it. So when it now comes to information um, to the mobile users, we first of all want to um, actually be able to yeah, send notifications reliable to the mobile staff and um, this is what I would like to start with. So before I kick off um, or create a sample issue a Node Manager, I would want to make use of the web service interface of the product. Um, and I um, actually um, yeah, send something in through the web service with my command line um, yeah, shell here um, by, by launching a client and then I send something in through the web service and this will trigger a policy and send notifications to the yeah, currently scheduled um, person from a specific team and then um, yeah, please mind the notification sound and also the ability 
to respond pretty quickly. We call that actionable notification. So the idea is to make it as fast as possible um, taking ownership, right, and preventing that it escalates further to team members or to managers. Yeah, um, make it um, available to, to to quickly um, acknowledge and take ownership of these incidents um, that come in as you are on duty. So I raise a sample incident. I forward it to the software wire web service, and then we should see an incident coming into the to the um, Apple device pretty shortly. And this is now a custom notification sound that you can hear. Yeah, and as you can see here, I am quickly able to acknowledge this incident by using yeah, the ability to yeah, execute the commands and actions straight from the lock screen of that iPhone. Yeah, so this is now the app, the, the mobile app running on an Apple device. Um, we also support it for other platforms and have it in the stores there as well. Um, but here you get an idea of how that um, feels and how you can actually quickly respond to that um, incident. Now this was a web service um, um, originated um, incident. When it would be originated from node manager or your HP systems or other third party systems, then now as I have acknowledged it straight from the lock screen, ownership would also be um, assigned in the third party system. We will see that in a couple of seconds. But let me actually um, um, send in another alert here with a different severity and let's hear what kind of push sounds we now play. So maybe you hear that. Um, it's now a different sound, so you are able to actually recognize the severity of your incidents um, based on the sound. And I am also able to do the actionable notifications and apply these response direction and take ownership uh, when the phone is unlocked. Yeah, And now I have um, ownership as well. Um, so keep in mind there is different notification sounds that you can configure for the purpose of not confusing these business related push notifications with the stuff that you get from WhatsApp or your social apps that are on the phone as well. And to at the same time be able to recognize the severity of the stuff that comes into your, uh, to your um, phone and to your job queue uh, that you need to look at um, so that you can get a great idea and be able to quickly classify and evaluate um, what you need to do and how, how fast you need to do that. Um, with that, I would like to yeah, move onwards and um, involve our HP software as well here. So as I said so far, I've triggered it via the web service interface. Now the idea is to let a monitored um, device or, or system fail in my environment, to let that be detected by node manager, and then to see that the connector um, that I showed you on this other um, page here. Um, the uh, network node manager connector is receiving this, this incident, this key incident that node manager logs and then sends an alert automatically to the mobile application um, again as well. Um, before we do that, let's have a brief look at um, how the app looks like. You can see I have opened it now. Um, we can find it here on the on the bottom right. It's called Durdak. I can tap on it, and then you can see it's a dashboard approach. So I can get a great idea of my status. So you can see currently I am on duty. Um, I am yeah, on duty for three days. Um, so that's the time when my on-call uh, service actually ends. I can get a great idea of the jobs that I currently have in my queue. So currently there's no new incidents that I need to look into. I have two incidents in my ACK queue, yeah, and um, these are the ones that I have raised through the web service interface. I can easily sort them by the variety or, or different categories, and I can also quickly close them all um, in, in one row by using the select all item here, and now I have resolved and, and closed these items pretty quickly with the mobile application. So with that, um, let's trigger a real um, your environment related incident. Hopefully you can see my RDP here. There's a network adapter that I will disable now manually. Yeah, usually that happens automatically, which is why it is so important to have your stuff looking at, at these um, systems from anywhere. Um, and when we refresh this node manager view here in a couple of seconds, it should detect that this um, second node here is no longer responding. And then we will see um, again in the mobile application an incident coming in and then we will look at all the details of this incident that is now this time originated from Network Node Manager. 
All right. Let me manually initiate a status poll. Sometimes the workloads and processes um, in background are faster than user interfaces. We can also check here if there is an incident already created. Yeah, so you can see the incident has been created already, um, but monitoring has not even updated the UI. Now it has. So you can see the node failed as I have disabled the network adapter. That has been received on our ends and triggered the policy that I had open in this other browser window here, this one, and it notifies the network team now. This is what we can see here. Now, from my mobile application, I don't have uh, received any notification yet because the primary person on duty for the network team was John Doe. But he has not responded, and that's why the um, system has escalated to myself as being the backup in another team. And you can see now I look at the details of that incident and I can, yeah, see that John Doe was notified first here in the timeline, but he actually missed the alert. Then the software has added another entry in the timeline where it says escalated to myself, to Renee. So I immediately understand of what happened. Um, the first person, the primary officer on duty actually missed the alert, which can happen. Um, so I can look at it and um, yeah, acknowledge it myself. So the idea here is to make every information available that's relevant to you in such a situation. Um, here you also have a row that is indicating if um, there is also still someone else on the chain in case you don't act it as well. So here you can see in this case I am the final person. There is no other option for me, so I should definitely acknowledge it. John Doe would have seen my name there. Um, and then you can see I have access to all the details coming from HP Network Node Manager. And the details that we display here can be configured in the, in the policy that we have seen. Yeah, so there you can tag um, which information should be displayed in the mobile application. This is what you can see here. So here you can format um, message content and information for SMS text and other channels. And you can also select which kind of HP or other systems um, details are displayed in the mobile application um, because you don't want to see the stuff that is not meaningful to you. Um, there's also a couple of other features like a reading view that you can open that removes all the Chrome so you can easily look at um, technical details and exception text and straight and, and stack traces and stuff. At the end, you would need to acknowledge it or decline it. If no one else is in a change, acknowledgement is probably the best idea. So I tap on the egg button. And then I say, okay, I will do that and I will look into it. And um, that's it. So I have now acknowledged this alert. And it's now, it has been moved to my, to my view of um, your yeah, act, act incidents. Yeah, this is what we can see here when we go back to the dashboard. Actually, we can see there's now one act item. And what I would like to do now is briefly check the corresponding item in the third party system, which we haven't even had the chance and time to do so because everything happened so quickly and in real time. So when I um, open the open key incidents view here in our HP system, we should see the corresponding record that Node Manager has created. And you can see um, that the information that the user has added through the smart application is looped back into that system. So this is how we close the loop. The information that I have commented and annotated in a mobile application is what we feed back to the source system and display here. We can also update the status and, and resolution information in these third party systems. If it is an incident in your CMDB, we can actually annotate it and change the status as well. So that is actually, that, that doesn't matter if it is a key incident in the node manager or, or an incident in your CMDB or some, some situation or, or policy record or event in, in operations manager, all that can, all that works actually the, the same. So you can see with that, I noticed the alert due to that um, your custom sounds that I have configured for myself and um, yeah, I have acknowledged it. Now I would like to move onwards to the collaboration aspect and the second pillar of it. Um, because it can happen that you don't know how to resolve this problem yourself. 
right? You look into the details which are accessible, of course, again, also if the alert is acknowledged and, and is in the acknowledged state, we can display more or less information here, but let's assume you don't have a clue of what to do. What is key to you and to yeah, reduce the downtime and, and to, to make it more efficient overall is the ability to, to, to collaborate. Yeah? So what you want to do is you want to have access to your peers, to your, to your team, right? And you can see when I tap here on share and collaborate, we can see other folks on call. Yeah? So some people may know the situation where <coughs> you get incidents. But the root cause is actually in the responsibility of someone else, um, like a failing database. Then you can actually use that who is on call view to get in context with the current person on call for that area, yeah? like Tino um, for the database um, systems. Yeah? So I can tap um, him and then you can see I would be able to call him directly or to um, yeah, text him while instant messaging. So the idea here is again, to actually integrate into what's already there, not only from the incident and monitoring side of the house, but also from the collaboration aspect of it. So that means we integrate here in the Skype for Business um, application, and um, we also open the mail application in case you want to share that incident with other team members while you are attending workshops or or events, trade shows like like Discover or stuff. Um, if you want to keep on call. Um, duty in that week, then you can actually look at your incidents here and distribute them while you are mobile and from anywhere to your team um, as well. Um, this is a scenario that you have. And then as Doreen mentioned, also there's the ability to not only mark one person at a time, but also um, yeah, create an ad hoc conference bridge with other folks as well if you select multiple people. Yeah? So when you select multiple people, what happens if you tap on the call tile is that you will get a call back where the um, selected participants will be in as well. And the whole conference is driven in the back end in Enterprise Alert here on our system, on our ends, and we um, operate the, the bridge, but um, the mobile users will be able to talk and, and get an incoming phone call. If you just select one person, the application, the phone app opens on your ends and attempts to dial the number um, behind that person, right? Um, so that is the option here. And using the switch on the top, you can actually change to which people you want to talk to. Yeah, so be it people on call from other um, departments, um, or you want to just display the team members of a team that you are a member of, um, like my network team, then you can see I have great access to the manager of that team pretty easily here on top, which is Rob, and then there are some team members that I can also talk to or I can actually reduce it to my backup person, which is John, maybe only for the purpose of texting him why he missed that alert and if we can actually look into it and, and do his job. Um, so that is, that is an option as well. So make it overall more efficient how people work and look at um, yeah, mission critical systems and the incident that's incidents that they may raise in after hours. So now once I have a clue what to do, um, or I got approval from my manager on a resolution plan that I made, but I wanted to get confirmation. Then we want to move onwards to the third pillar, the remote remediation capability, right? So being able to react from anywhere, removing the need to di um, dial in and take out the laptop, but rather operate our environment from <coughs> anywhere. And this is what we do with the remote actions. And um, these actions are actually um, coming from third-party systems, yeah. Um, it's not primarily the case that we um, execute it um, or logics in your environment from our ends. The idea really here is as well to make it possible to um, launch flows or runbooks that you have into your in your third-party um, IT automation systems like HP Operations Orchestration. And I have um, created um, a flow here that is able to restart that monitored network node, which is currently fail in a failure state, right? This is what we have seen in the um, network overview map here. It's still red. So the idea is to have a flow and an orchestration um, that, that enables this network adapter again for me. And we integrate into um, op op operations orchestrations. We read 
the um, yeah, corresponding flows that are of relevance and then we make them available as what we call remote actions. Yeah. So you can see you can configure them in the backend system. What you do is actually you just select the flow that you want to make available for mobile users and then you select the mobile users that should have access to execute that flow. Um, and then in the policies you can make specific flows, um, yeah, a recommended one for this specific network environment. So the node restart um, flow is showing up here um, because I'm yeah, promoted it to be a recommended action that is supposed to yeah, resolve these kind of issues pretty easily and then you don't have to select the one that does the job for these and that incident manually from all the list of, of tool sets and, and tasks. So what I will do is I will simply execute that flow. It takes a name of a NIC um, and then of a network interface card and then um, I enter my remote action pin. And now what we do is, and this is what I wanted to show you in real time, see how the flow is being executed. Yeah. So our integration kicked it off. Hopefully you have seen it. <coughs> and the NIC is now activated again. Yeah, hopefully you have recognized it as well. It's now active again. And when we now refresh um, this view here in a couple of seconds, it should indicate um, yeah, that it is up and running again, which is, of course, something that you can, can't see when you are mobile and you yeah, work with a mobile application only. But I want to prove that this is all real. So now it's green again. So it recovered. And now see that the confirmation push notification is coming into my mobile application. I use it as a shortcut to open the, and refresh the details of that uh, node manager incident again and see how we have added a confirmation timeline entry that obviously the third party system, in our case node manager, detected that the monitored device or system is up and running again. So that perfectly proves to us um, that the node restart remote um, action did its job and, and, and actually, yeah, resolved the problem and, and fixed my environment. Yeah, so this can all be done from the mobile application. Um, with that, I would like to end the demo part um, with briefly showing you the settings of the app. So you can select the sounds in here for the specific severities that we know of. You can select an ascending ringtone, which is great feature um, in the night. Um, we have an on-call reminder that we can send, so you can subscribe to be notified for your on-call duty before it starts, um, all these kind of things. So this is, um, yeah, can be configured by each user in the settings. And um, yeah, with that, I would actually like to open the second poll and um, ask you which kind of further features and tasks and tools you would want to see in the mobile application when it comes to anywhere operations. Yeah, so we have seen the capability of collaboration. We have seen the capability of um, executing remote tasks. But what else would be important for you that you have in your business hour consoles like Node Manager, but you would want to find useful in the mobile application as well? Thanks, Ray. And, and the question is, thinking about anywhere operations of mission critical systems, which other capabilities are relevant for you? Logging major incidents in a CMDB or ITSM system, transferring or forwarding incidents to other systems or, or other teams, uh, opting out from certain unwanted alerts, generating reports about on-call after our activities. So uh, those are the questions, and we'll give it a minute or so to uh, to get everyone's responses. But uh, Renee, this is this is amazing stuff. I mean, it's come along. You, what you guys have done at DeerDAC to, you know, not having been tied to the council in a data center, but to be actually be remote using your, you know, your iPhone or whatever to not only visualize alerts but also create actionable items to to solve the problem, have it be annotated back on the console of NNM or wherever the uh, the event management started and uh, and then to be able to collaborate with other teammates through your mobile device that's uh, that's amazing so let's uh, let's see what the results are for this poll question so this is uh, yeah, it's a little more relevant. So 
40% are logging major incidents in their CMDB or help desk or ITSM system. 20% are transferring or forwarding incidents to other teams. No one's opting out f uh, for unwanted alerts. That kind mm -hmm. of surprises me because sometimes we get so many alerts, we want to find a way to kill it. 40% uh, also are generating reports after on-call or after hour activity. So 40% uh, for generating reports, 40% for logging major incidents in a CMDB. There mm -hmm. you go. It's it's interesting. It's definitely incident, uh, interesting. So the ability to create an incident in the CMDB is currently reflected with a remote action as well. So you would be able to lock this um, node manager incident in your HP service manager system just by executing another remote action. Um, but I would like to learn more um, about yeah how that workflow is supposed to work out uh, at the end and um, what kind of reference information you would really want to see um, in this key in, in this incident and service manager. Then so there's definitely some yeah further um, info that that I would like to learn here. But the basic capabilities are already there. So if you access your SM and uh, search an incident with that ID, then you would see an incident um, that has the information um, that I would have been able to enter here. But um, yeah, the correlation between all the records is something that I would like to learn more about. Um, but it's definitely interesting. Um, what the people answered here. Yeah, um, with that, I think the demo part of it is over, and we can move on. What with the with the with the wrap up and 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 Q and A, right? That'll be great. So, we're back to uh, Doreen uh, with the uh, closing slides, or, and then we'll get into questions and answers. Can you Perfect. see the slide? Is it popping up? Yes. Perfect. Great. So just want to let everybody know, if you don't already know, that uh, Discover 2015 is in London this year. Uh, we have a link for you. And to register to get a deeper discount, as long as you use your Vivid ID, and uh, to take advantage of that. And uh, and I know Deerdex is going to be, it's going to have a booth there as well. That's correct, right? That, that's right. We're going to be at booth right. number 490. Great. So let's uh, let's get, get into some questions here. I've got uh, hmm, let's see. Jason Reed here is asking what integration capabilities exist to have an on-call and inspect diagnostic information before remote action. What integration capabilities exist to have an on-call and inspect diagnost diagnostic information before a remote action from, from their smartphone? Um, good, good question, I have to admit. Um, I'm not entirely understanding what the question is referring to. Um, what we can definitely do is integrating into systems um, where we read um, on-call assignments and calendars so that you don't have to manage it in our software if you don't want to, like from SAP systems or so. Um, that's a capability that we have. And um, other than that, yeah, the reporting part of it, um, I mean, there is the information and data in the software so that you can access it within your tools and generate your reports um, of the incident volume that came up, maybe also per team or, or per time then when, when you want to limit that information and, and, and report result to, to after hour activities only. So there's scenarios that I can think of, but... Um, Renee, I, I think I think the question also relates to, um, you know, what kind of... Um, what kind of information you get to actually trigger a certain remote action. So what kind of troubleshooting information you have. Oh, Jason just uh, sent another one. Yes. Um. He, Jason, just, just to let you know, Renee, Jason just said an, an example would be if they need to know the reason why the note went down before restarting it. That's the answer he's looking for. Yeah, that's a good question. So maybe that, that reason um, is something that he um, finds in all the details of the of the incident from the manager. <coughs> um, what we can also do is um, applying script information that assembles a bit more 
um, info and data automatically. I mean, what you can also do is um, finding out the reason yourself. Um, I think my phone is no longer online, but um, there's another remote action that I have or, or had on the recommended section that says no ping. So this is more an investigation task of it. So you would be able to ping a network device and, and uh, investigate it a bit further, maybe response times or stuff. And then you decide yourself if it is really down or, or the reason, and, and then you, you yeah, decide which next action to execute. Other than that, you can maybe yeah, also, also in, in close and, and save knowledge information with an incident that we transfer. So there's also attachments that you can add to an incoming incident, like images or hyperlinks, which will open further knowledge or so. Um, there's various ways to play this, I, I believe. And Jason, that was a good question. Uh, along with that comes an Amazon gift card from Deerdeck. So uh, look for that in your email box. Uh, let's see. We've got another question here. Is how is the product licensed? Right. It's um, what we saw just now was our on-premise uh, version of the, the product, which follows a perpetual licensing. So you basically uh, have a uh, one-time license fee for um, it's actually a combination of the server component and the actual users that receive notifications. But we do not license per node or per event source or anything like that. So we don't care about how many backend systems she actually connect to the systems, how many console, um, consoles, if you want. Um, it's a forward um, licensing method where we basically take into account how many people are being notified. Is it 10? Is it 100? Is it 1,000? Right? And there is a subscription-based option available as well, but um, it's not a full cloud service, so everything actually is more or less still either perpetual on-premise or um, it is a, a platform as a service type offering. Okay, great, great. And does it support any HA scenarios? Oh, absolutely. There's various uh, options for that. Renee, I'm not sure if you want to chip in here. Um, just explain a little further, but there is a variety of options because our customers call this system blast system standing. If everything else goes down, they still need to receive the information that everything is down. <laughs> yeah, so the basic idea here is to actually build clusters, um, so to deploy multiple nodes of the system. And um, yeah, then they can work, in example, in an active, active fashion. Um, and um, yeah, then they would actually also thereby share the workload a bit. Um, but if one node fails, then the other node will still be able and capable to handle the incidents and to, to cater for the, the notifications. And then there's also an HA um, yeah, um, ability in the form of um, in sending out notifications. Um, so you can connect to multiple devices or, or carriers at the same time, and we can fail over between these notification channels as well. So there's yeah, great um, level of HA that you can actually implement with a couple of features um, that the product um, um, offers. Okay, great. Let's see. I think I had another question about, you know, can I get an evaluation copy of this product? Definitely. Um, we, if you know, people go to our website. There is a um, download a free trial option available that runs up to four weeks. And something even better for everyone attending HP Discover, we're going to have a free HP Express edition available of our product that will not expire. It will have a limitation in terms of the number of users that it provides. Um, and some of the functionality, but um, most of it is going to be available um, and that will pass out exclusively at HP Discover. So that's actually a unique opportunity to get your hands onto your free license on a software. Okay, great. Dory, can you go to the next slide? Yeah, let me just do that. There you go. So, there we go. Uh, I think I said it. Um, so we've got a program at Discover. Vivid will be there as well. Uh, so take a come by. We've got prizes we're giving away as well. Uh, next slide. I think we have some announcements here. There we go. So for those that are attending, there are uh, some 
uh, breakout sessions that kind of dive into different areas of uh, expertise. You can register for those on the Vivid website under, uh, I think it's some of our, in our event area. And uh, those are going to be some great sessions. Next. And DeerDeck is actually going to be at the Vivid booth on December 2nd at 10 o'clock to kind of go through this as well. And here's some registration information. We will be sending out this slide deck along with all the questions and answers in a couple of days. And it's a recorded webinar. You get all the information for those that didn't make it today or you wanted to review it again. Next slide. So if there's a if you want to complete uh, the short survey and opt in for more information from DeerDAC, here's where to do it. And we also had one more uh, winner in the giveaway from DeerDAC uh, today, and that's Mark uh, Seely, S or uh, C E E L Y from Infosys. And so, Mark, you'll be seeing an email for an Amazon gift card as well. Next slide. I think that's probably it. So it looks like a final slide to me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we have any other questions. Thanks uh, for a great job for our sponsor, Deer Deck. And uh, if you have any more info and uh, want to learn more about their solution, please opt in, and they will be glad to assist you with with that. We will close out the webinar for today. Thank you, everyone. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, Rocky. You bet. Bye-bye. Take care.